Well, good morning, kiddos. So some of the assignments, so the master production assignment that, um, you know, you probably saw, like, it, it, Canvas probably tells you, like, every time I enter a grade, is that what it does? And so you probably saw a grade, you might have seen it change. So I started off grading it like I normally would, and everybody was doing so bad that I went back and looked at the lecture, and I thought the sign was really easy, but when I went back and looked at the lecture where I described it, I, I did say like in words, and I did describe how to do it completely, but I didn't go through an example that would that was one like I gave you. So, um, so I felt um, it wasn't a, I didn't do as good a job as I should have. So you started off with one grade, then it went up, uh, curved it up, and, um, and then um, I also, as you saw in the email, I've got a bonus assignment where you can get another 50 points where I have a worksheet where I show you how to, do every, if y'all got something wrong, it was always the ATP. And it was always because you weren't accounting for orders in future months from the ATP. So I made a little worksheet where I have an example like the one that you are assigned and then you, it's a sheet that tells you exactly how to do it. So I think with that, you should be able to go back and redo the assignment and do it just fine. And for most of you, if you, what's your name? Are you Gavin? Yes, sir. Okay. For, and you can get at most 50 points, but for, I uh, said 50 points because for most of you, that'll give you 100 on it. Will you... And you've completed the two essay question thing, and so I'm going to be entering grades. But here's the thing uh, about how I grade. Sometimes my first grades I enter are preliminary. So, like, I've, I've graded five of those two essay assignments so far. And when I start with, I, um, I take the first one that I grade, and I say, okay, just based on this one, how much do I like it? What kind of points do I assign it? And, and then I'll give them some points. And then that's kind of a baseline I go off from there. Then as I'm grading more, sometimes I find that that first one was actually exceptional compared to everybody else's. Sometimes I find that, especially with essay questions, I have an idea of what a good answer is, but y'all have kind of a different notion of what I'm asking. And y'all are providing good answers. It's just a little different than I was, and so I changed my mind about how I should award points. So I go through, and um, even if you, you get a score initially, I may go back and change it later. And, but there will be at some point when all the grading is it, of it is done. I'm guessing with those two essay questions, the grades, your, the initial grades you get won't change much, but because I haven't seen a lot of them yet, and because my notion of what is a good answer changes, can change the more I grade, it may change. The only outstanding assignments right now are just the bonus MPS assignment, and we're going to continue on these inventory models, and what we're going to be doing today is just more examples, trying to really drive it home. Um, we may start the new stochastic model, but I'm also going to be showing you how you're going to take the the thing that's like an exam on it. And so I don't I don't think I'll ever have an exam, uh, assignment called an exam, but I, there is one called a big assignment for inventory models. It's not up yet, but I made a draft, and it is one of those things where everybody has different numbers. So as we do today's worksheet, we're going to be going through that so you see exactly how you get the numbers and how you use them and everything. And everything about these big assignments will be one, calculating the right numbers and two, understanding the model, the nature of it, what it means, as, as we'll see with some questions that we do today. Okay. 
So this is under construction, but you can see it's called Big Assignment on Inventory Models. And it's going to look like this. It's going to first start off, it's going to say, for all questions below requiring a numerical answer, please round to four decimal places. That's when you submit an answer. So like this, it's going to say, what is the optimal value of Q? And you're just going to type it in there. So when you type it in, do four decimal places. However, it also says that when you perform your calculations, please do them all in Excel so you don't have to round any numbers. So for like maybe for your first uh, Q star, you estimate uh, the Q star and you get a number that's like eight digits long. Instead of just rounding the four and using that in your calculation, I want you to do the calculations in Excel so you don't have to round anything. That way you should get the exact answer that's not off due to rounding. And hopefully you'll see what I mean as we go along. And what you're going to do, so for instance, we're going to, I passed out the worksheet. It says at the top worksheet on economic order quantity given on March 2nd. And it has questions and it's, this is quite similar to what these is, uh, this big assignment questions are going to be. And I'll be doing it in Excel so you can see. Okay, let me see something. Let me see how quick it switches when I do this. So starting you off with a question like this, and you know, here I'm always having to give you the values of D, C, R, H, and L. But this actually comes off the same database that you're going to get your numbers from. So let me show you that. It's going to say on here, please go to the sheet blah 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 and use sheet 1 to obtain your values of R, H, C, D, and L. In question A, and um, okay, I was hoping it'd say like A1 here, so I'll change, I'll try to remember to go back where instead of question one, this will say like A1. But you just go into the spreadsheet, and you can see we have each person, and we have their values of. R, H, C, D, and L for question A, and then R, H, C, D, and L for question B. And I'm actually using, you can see here I have example on 3221, so I'm actually taking these from there. So when you look on your sheet, uh, annual demand D, 65,476, that's the numbers there. Okay, so we have our numbers there. So this looks like here. Okay. 
And then these are asking, it's going to ask, what is Q star, T star, another form of T star, N star, when do you place a new order, and stuff like that. So I'm first going to go through down the sheet and talk about the formulas you use. And these are for, we've been doing this before. So these, even if you don't have these memorized, they should be very familiar. We've already derived them, so I'm not going to go over again how exactly we get them. So we know we're going to have to calculate Q star, and we know that Q star is 2 the square root of 2rd divided by h. We know we're going to have to calculate t star and we know it's going to be t star is q star divided by d. t star in days and of course this t star right here is in fractions of a year so t star in days is just T star times 365.25. We need to know N star, the number of orders per year. Well, that's just the inverse of T star. And of course, this is one where we have a lead time. It takes two days between when the order is placed and when it arrives. And number five is asking, you should place a new order of Q star how long after the previous order? So you place new order at, sorry, T star minus L. I should actually say. Usually lead time is expressed in days, but the T there is in fractions of a year, so to convert lead time to fractions of a year, we just divide it by 365.25. Number six, you place a new order that should be of Q star when inventory on hand equals what? when inventory on hand equals Q star Yeah, so it's like Q star L divided by T, but L has to be expressed in fractions of a year. So we take L, which there, and we'll do these calculations in a minute. L there is two days, so we're going to go 2 divided by 365.25, divide that by T, multiply it by Q star. That tells us the inventory on hand for which we need to make a new order. And then finally, it's going to ask what's your total inventory purchasing and management cost? And, and you know, this, everything's going to be open book, so you're going to have that chapter 9, you're going to have that, that figure that I even handed out that even tells you all this stuff. But the formula for total cost is little c times d plus r times d divided by q for number of orders plus h times q divided by 2. So these are all the formulas that we need to answer these questions and so now what we need to do is actually take the numbers and crunch the numbers. And again I'm going to go back and I'm going to do all these numbers in Excel so I don't have to worry about any rounding. And you know, you are going to have to do, there's going to be two questions like this on the big assignment. And the main difference between them, they're just different numbers. So if you set the first question up in Excel and it looks right, you can just plug in the different numbers. For the second one, it'll automatically calculate them for you. Of course, you might want to also do them by hand some, just to, as a double check to make sure you're getting the numbers right.
All right. Q star. Trying to make sure all our friends online can see everything okay. Q star. We've got a RHC DNL, so all we need to do is take the formula and we say Q star is the square root of 2 times R times D divided by H. And I get 5,771. Now, also on here, it's, you know, on the sheet is saying calculate its precise value, including its units, describe what it means. So Q star there, 5,771.84 units per order. So every time we're placing the order, that's how many we're, we're buying. Now, this may have tons of, see it's got tons of different decimal places. As long as you do it in Excel, we don't have to worry about rounding. So, you know, even, like, if I change these decimals where there's no decimal places showing, Excel still knows the decimal places. And so it's still going to make the calculations using all the decimal places. And then T star, the length of time between each order where time is expressed in fractions of a year. That is Q star divided by D. So I go up here and I take my Q star of 5,771 divided by annual demand of 65,476. And we get 0.882 fractions of a year between orders. And then T star in days, we're just saying well T star in fractions of a year is that, 0 0.088. There are 365.25 days in a year. And so about 32 days between each order. And of course, remember, every, every class I have, I'm doing a video of it, and I'm putting it on Canvas, not just for the online students, but for everyone. So you can always go back and look at this. And then N star is just the number of orders per year, and we found that it was the inverse of T star. So I can just go 1 divided by T star. I'm sorry. Well, you can't do the T star in days. We're not doing 0 .03 orders per year. It's the inverse of T expressed as fractions of a year. So about 11 orders per year. And so next we're asking uh, you should place a new order of this is number five. You should place a new order of Q star. How long after the previous order? Well, that's just, um, we said it was T star minus L. Well, where L there is expressed in fractions of a year. So we know that in about 8% of a year, we're going to run out of inventory. But we also know that lead time here is two days. And so we need to place our new order two days before we run out, but we're not talking about days here, we're talking about fractions of a year, and when you convert 
two days to fractions of a year, 2 divided by 365.25.082. So in point .088 time periods, we're going to run out. So we place a new order at point .082 time periods. Therefore, the order will arrive in time. And might be useful to us in a minute, so I'll do um, ALN percent of year. Number six says, you should place a new order of Q star when inventory on hand equals what? Well, this new order, so we play, this says we place a new order in this time periods, 0.082 time periods. Time is percent of year. And now we're asking new order. And our units is going to be when in inventory on hand equals. And the new orders could be, we look at our formula, we place a new order. When inventory equals, we take our Q star of that. We're going to multiply it by L divided by T. L here is in fractions of a year. So L in percent of year is that. Divide by T star. So this is saying that we're ordering, every time we place an order we get 5,772 units and we need to place a new order when those inventories dwindle down to 358 units. Again, this is stuff we've all done before. We're just um, revisiting everything. TC total cost here. Total cost is going to be total cost per year. And we just take our formula. So our formula says total cost is little c times big D. Little c times big D plus R times D divided by Q, but D divided by Q is just a number of orders every year. So that was D divided by Q, so I'm going to just use that. Plus H holding cost times Q star divided by 2. Almost a million dollars. Can you go to the uh, storage portion? Go to what, Brock? Yeah. Okay, so N star number of orders per year. One way of doing that is 1 divided by T star, but another way of doing it is D divided by Q because T is uh, Q divided by D. Mm -hmm. For a lot of these numbers, there's more than one way you can calculate them. And because all you're doing is providing answers on the exam, at least for those certain questions, you, um, you, you can just have your way of doing it. But, I, but there's going to be other questions on there where like, you may have to know like N star is the reciprocal of T star, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, the big assignment, yeah. I'm trying not to use the word exam, but. Okay. 
The next couple questions on here is just really trying to see if you understand the, the model and some of the assumptions behind it and how it works. And there will be questions like this. There will probably be multiple choice questions. I'm sure there will be one or two essay questions, but not too many. What number 10 is wanting you to do is to graph how, sorry, number 8. What number 8 is wanting you to do is to understand how inventory on hand changes over time. And this information is most like I've, I've given out there's figures in the book that looks like this. And so we're replicating some of these figures there. Now this one, when we do it here, it's going to be really hard to draw because things are, are jumbled up. But you know what I may do is give you a scenario and say which graph um, represents this. So I want to make sure you understand how inventory on hand changes over time. Notice that time down there is expressed as a fraction of a year. And on the y-axis we have inventory on demand. And here's what we know. We know that at when we place a new order, we're always assuming you place a, yes, it's going to say same here. It's going to say assume you place a new order at time t minus zero. So at t time t minus zero, your inventory is going from zero to five thousand seven hundred seventy one. There's a big thing here because and I did that to illustrate this. Some of you, you may have a Q star over twenty thousand and some of you may only have a Q star in the hundreds. So the Q star is going to differ, differ for each person. And I already marked you present because I knew you were coming. And so at time zero, you're going to place a new order. And it, I'm just guesstimating 5,771 is about right there. You know, just somewhere close to 6,000. And then, then all I need to know is at what time period we're going to run out of inventories. And then I connect, connect the dots. So at what time period, time expresses fraction of a year, will we completely run out of inventory? I'd hate to call on Sam. She hates that. It's a very precise number. Do you happen to know Samantha? I'm sorry? You can defer to Stephen. Stephen usually knows. Do you know what time we're placing a new order? Say that again. Yeah, and so, and there's a lead time. And so we're ordering it just enough time so that when that stuff arrives, we've completely run out of the old stuff. So we run out when? Yeah, point zero point point zero eight eight two. That's when we completely run out. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'm having to guesstimate point oh eight. I'm just going to go point oh nine.
And again, I know this looks ridiculous, but I'm doing this because I, I want you to understand that you may get very different numbers. So T star is where we run out. Remember, if that was an instantaneous lead time, when we hit T star, we just make a new order and it arrives instantaneously. But because we have a lead time, we start with T star, we back off our lead time, and we place our order then. So inventory at first is going to look like this. And then we place, we'll place in, then the new stuff arrives exactly on this date. So we go back up to here. New stuff arrives. We dwindle it down. New stuff arrives. And we bring it down like that. It's linear because we're assuming a constant demand where every day we use the same amount. Number nine is going to say in the graph above, indicate the points in time at which new orders are placed. I'm going to do these calculations on the spreadsheet, then we'll put it a little in the graph there. And so we'll do these questions to make sure you understand the model. So like, you know, I can tell right now a good question would be to give you this model and just ask you when will, after new orders place, when will, when will you completely run out of it? You know, and you just need to know to be able to tell me it's that T star, whatever that is. Okay. What we're doing now is we're looking at the point in times when we're going to be placing new orders. So we know that T star So I know starting from time zero, we are going to run out of inventory at time point 0882. And I know there's going to be a new order. And then I know with that new order, we're going to run out in another point 0882 time periods. So we're going to run out of a second order after two of those time periods, two times out. We're going to run out of our third order at three times T star. And so what we were doing there, we were calculating when we run out. We were calculating those precise points here. But we also want to be able to say when are new orders going to be placed. Well, our rule is always and forever, as we have seen, whenever we run out, we want to order it L time periods before. L here expresses factions of a year as 0.005, 0055. So we're, we're going to want to place our new order, that first T star minus that. So we're going to run out here. It takes it this long 
for the new order to come, so we're going to place our new order here. Well, the second time we run out, it's going to be here, so we need to place our new order, start from that time period, and then subtract the lead time. After our third order, it's going to run out here, and so we need to place our order L periods before that. And so for instance, this tells us that we're going to place, and I'm going to concentrate on this, this is telling us that we're going to place our third order at point, at the point in time that's point two five nine zero, after about the first quarter of a year. And so if I was going to show this on this um, sheet, I just may, I'm just going to do it like this. The third order is placed at time 3T star minus L. 0.2589, 83, 89, I'm sorry. Okay. So what we're doing now, really want to make sure you understand exactly how this inventory is working, exactly when we're purchasing, when we run out. That's how you, if you don't understand that, you don't understand what we're really doing here. So I could give you like a, a simple problem where I tell you T star is 0.2, the lead time is five days. At what point in time will you place your, or, your fourth order? That kind of thing. And you already have this thing to look at where you've already put at what period in time you're placing your third order, so you should be able to get it pretty easily. Number 10, this is trying to make sure you understand some of the assumptions behind the model. It says, in the graph below, illustrate, illustrate daily chickle base needs, your demand. And so I'm wanting like one line saying how much we need on day one, day two, day three. And in this model we're saying the demand for chickle base, it's known, it's constant, it's continuing. So this is going to be a straight line across, horizontal. You need the same amount on day one as you need day two. But how much is that? Well we know how much we need overall, all year. That number is 65,476. We know there are 365.25 days in a year, so we can easily calculate our daily needs. Big D divided by 365.25. Six, five, four, seven, six. It should be a hundred seventy nine point two six three five. That's our daily needs, and so if we're graphing our daily needs. I just come somewhere close to 179. And it's a straight line across.
at 179. So our next model is not going to be like that. Our next model is not just constant. It can, it can go anything. We don't know exactly what it's going to be. We know something about its distribution. Number 11 here is we're saying things. I've told you Chico base is continuous. What I mean by it's constant, I want to make sure you understand some of those assumptions there. So when we, when we say demand for Chico base is constant, that means we need some, when we say it's continuous, we need some every week, we need some every day, we need some every hour, every second. So this is a mathematical assumption. It's not, you know, in reality, you don't always need at least another pound of chicle base every second. But that's what the mathematical model describes. That's what lets us do calculus. But that's all that continuous means. It doesn't go in chunks. It's continual. You need some more, more, more. Every, no matter how small that time period is, you always need some, even if it's fractions of a pound, even if it's very, very small fractions of a pound. And then what does it mean when we say demand for chicle base is constant? Need same amount one day to the next. So on one day, day one, you need just as much as on day two and day three and day four. You need the same amount one hour to the next. So in hour one you need the same amount as you need in hour two. Obviously in one day you need more than you need in one hour, but you need to compare one day to another, you need the exact same amount. Comparing one hour to another, exact same amount. Comparing one second to another, exact same amount. Okay, this next, this next set of questions are ones I really like and it can really test you and it can be a little hard. Some of, them are, some of them are really easy, some of them can be tricky. Okay. And it's here that you really want to rely on your formulas. Sometimes, yeah, your intuition can help, but your formulas are what's really going to help you. And the way we're going to answer these is an up arrow means increase, down arrow means decrease, and an X means no change. Okay, so how do each of the following variables change as R changes? And I want you, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm going to make a deal with you. If, um, if you actively try to answer these with me, we'll quit on these. Okay, so you're saying how do each of the following variable changes as R changes? Uh, so what's R again? What's that? Yep, the amount it costs you to place an order. Every time you place an order, it's that ordering cost. And so you could say, okay, if ordering costs, how do I expect certain things to change? You can use your tuition, don't have to think too much. So if the cost of placing an order changes, how does that change the D, your annual need for chicle base, the annual demand for it? No change. It shouldn't change. Q. Now, if I have Q there, you know, I would try to certainly try to remember to say Q star so you know it's, you should know that Q star is something that you calculate. You know, D is given to you. 
If I'm just giving you a number, that's not going to, if I give you a number for D, it's not changing as R changes. Okay, so you, Q star, you can, one, use your intuition. So if it costs more to place an order, are you going to order more each time or less each time? More? Yeah. Okay, now, yeah, we, have, we need to think about, this, when we say place an order, there's the cost of each unit that you buy. And that's little c. But what we're talking about here is r, meaning, and what I always do, I just think about r being the amount of time it takes me to place an order. So if it takes me more time, if it's more of a burden to me every time I place an order, am I going to order more each time or less each time? More, right? Intuitive. But, and if you're, um, tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to do these like this. So this is number, thirteen, as R rises, we said that D does not change, we're saying Q does not change. But now, to make sure, let's look at, our, look at your formula for Q star. And what happens when R goes up on there? What's that? Yeah, like when R goes up, Q star rises, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you just look at this formula, Q star equals square root of 2 R D divided by H, you take that R, you make it a bigger number, Q star is going to go up. So that's pretty easy. It's going to go up. Q star is going to go up. H is the holding cost. How does the cost of keeping things in inventory change as it takes more time for you to place an order? One person said it doesn't change. What do you think, Lance? You going to agree? Yeah, I think so too. No change. T star. What is T star again? Let me hear from one of my friends right over here. In words, what is T star? Yeah, the amount of time between orders, right? And so we know that the cost of us placing the order is going up. Now it's more aggravating to do. And we're ordering more each time. Well, for ordering more each time, is the length of time between orders going to rise or fall? It's going to increase, right. And of course, if you go and you look at your formula for T star, square root of 2R divided by HD, when R goes up, that T star is going to go up. How does lead time change as R goes up, even Stephen? Nope, it's going to stay exactly the same. L is just the number I give you. I've always got to tell you what L is. And like in, in the other problem, I thought, was it two days? And so if I change R, L's still the same. It's just a number, so no change. Hmm. Total cost. If it costs more to place an order, you think costs are going to go up or down? There you go, Rachel. Up. It's not even ceteris paribus. The, like your Q star will change yeah. as R goes up, but um, we didn't derive it in here. Uh, if it wasn't a, we would be doing it, but you can actually get a formula for total cost that is this. C times D plus the square root of 2 RHD. And so, you know, when R changes in there, you don't have to worry about what Q is doing. And I had this formula ready in case someone asked that, just so you know that, yeah, it 
total cost will increase. Even if Q stars, even, so, you know, what he's saying is that, well, when R goes up, you adjust, right? You change what you're doing. Yes, you do, but it, your costs are still going to go up. goes up, what about the point in time when you reorder? Then it's going to decrease? Okay, well, let's think about it like this, okay. Our point of reorder, if we go to our formula, is going to say T star minus L. As R goes up, we said L doesn't change, but what happens to T star? Yeah, we already said T star increases. And so, as R increases, we said T goes up, L stays the same. So our point where we reorder is also going to go up. Now this next one would be kind of a tricky one. And I'll 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 ask you to guess, but we'll walk through it together. So you remember um so another way of looking at when we reorder is when our inventory hits a certain level where we say, okay, now we got to reorder. Okay, now R is going up. And we know that Q star is going up. We know T star is going up. We know that the point in time when we reorder is going up. Intuitively, do you think the amount of inventory at which you reorder would go up or down or not change? Just guess. Go up? That's a reasonable guess. Anybody think go down? Anybody think not change? Actually not change is, is right. And here's one way of thinking about this. And it took me doing the math before I understood that there's a lot of intuition there, but I didn't see the intuition before I saw the math. So we say we reorder when inventory on hand equals Q star times L divided by T, where L there is, is in fractions of a year. Okay. And so you can think, well, when L go, well, when R goes up, um, well, Q's going up and T's going up, so that doesn't tell me whether it's going to go up. But remember, T star equals Q star divided by D. So Q star L divided by T, thus, well, if T star is Q star divided by D, then Q star also equals T star divided by D. So we know T star is Q star divided by D. All I did was put Q alone by multiplying D by both sides. Then Q star L divided by T equals, I'm substituting this for Q star down here, equals T star times D times L divided by T. Well, these two T's cancel out, and all you're left with is L times D.
So this means we order when inventory on hand equals L times D, where L is in fractions of a year. And L and D are, they're deep parameters, meaning I have to give those to you. And they're not changing unless I say they change. So when R goes up, L's still just a number, D's still just a number. So the point, the inventory point, inventory position we sometimes call it, at which we order stays exactly the same. No matter how high R goes or how low R goes. And, and here's the... Here's the intuition. Remember what you're doing is you start with this big inventory level and you're watching it fall, fall, fall. And, and all you're saying is that, okay, I need to reorder such that there's just enough inventory left to get me through lead time. If lead time's two days, meaning I reorder when there's just enough inventory to last me two days. Well, that doesn't depend anything on ordering calls. It doesn't, that doesn't depend on what Q star is. The amount I need over two days just depends on what total demand is because demand is the same in every time period. And so it's going to be exactly the same. And so in that question, uh, the, it's no change. So I'll answer down here. When you reorder in inventory on hand, no change there. See, it, it is true that economists, we like to do math because we like math, but we also believe it actually really helps you understand the problem well. Sometimes doing the math first helps you understand the intuition behind it. Now we're at number 14. It's asking you about similar questions. Okay, but now we're saying how do each of the following variables change? It says as L changes, it should always, it should say as L rises. So replace changes with rises, okay. Okay, what is lead time again? Let me hear from someone who's never said anything in class. Yeah, I'm talking about the people avoiding all eye contact with me right now. Even like big, tall people with beautiful blonde hair who should be proud to draw attention to his beautiful hair in class but still sits back there and says absolutely nothing. Yeah, the time between when you place an order and when it arrives. Okay, so if that lead time increases if it takes it longer for stuff to get to you how does that change the total amount of chickle that you will need there you go mr joe say aloud don't change that's right what about q star how do you know gavin Yeah, it's not in the equation, right? Not in the equation, it's not going to affect it. How will that change H, holding cost? Sam? Won't change, that's right. 
What about T Star, Mr. Franks? Can you, can you be a little more articulate? I can't understand you. I don't think it will. Now, because things like T, T star, is Q star divided by D. And we already said Q star won't change. And we said D won't change. So T star won't change either. Now, I know you're, it does change something else when you reorder, but not the time between orders. And actually, time is not time between orders so much as it is time between when you run out. How does L change as L changes? You got this one, Stevie Ray Vaughan. What happens to L as L goes up? What's that? You sure? You confident? Atta boy. How does total cost change as L goes up? Let me hear from um, one of my friends here. Yuk Sun Unseen, do you know? What's that? Yeah, it doesn't change at all. Because L's not in the equation for total cost. Okay, what about the time you reorder? So when you're thinking about this, you're thinking, always think of it in, in terms of, I just placed an order. As L goes up, how does that change the amount of time that goes by until I place a new order? It takes, us, takes it longer for us to get there, or just look at the, you can look at, okay, one thing, it takes it longer for us to, for it to get to us, so do we order sooner or later? What? Sooner. And another way of looking at it is the time at which you reorder was T star minus L. We said uh, T star doesn't change, and so if L goes up, T star minus L goes down. What about the point, the inventory position at, what, at which you need to reorder? Increase. Because remember, that point just equaled L times D. So if L goes up, L times D goes up. All right, one more. And your wellness day parties can begin. Now, saying as C rises, So now C is going up. What's C again? Yeah, so like if you're buying chickle base, it's, it's like the per pound cost of the chickle, va chickle base. And so that per pound, now, you know, you always got to, you, you can always think, well, if it's more expensive for me to buy chickle base, then maybe I would be purchasing less of it. But that's not the setup of this question. In this question, I'm telling you how much you need. So there's no like demand curve here. So, you know, I'm always telling you what D is. And so if C goes up, D is just a number I give you, it's not going to change. And what is Q star again, Courtney? Okay, what is it in 
like in language. Yeah, units per order. And in that equation, is C in there? Nope. So it's not going to impact how much we order at a time. H is the cost of running the warehouse and stuff. It's not going to change. The formula for T star, does it have C in there? No. See, and so now you're seeing that equation for Q star, this decision, it doesn't have anything to do with the per unit purchasing price because that's the same no matter what we decide. That's fixed. What we're doing when we determine QR is we're making a trade-off between the cost of having to order something, the time you have to give it to order something, and the cost of storing stuff in the warehouse. And neither one of those have to do with the per unit cost. Lead time, it's not going to change. What about total cost as C goes up? Yeah, it's going to go up. That's really the only place C ever shows up and just the total cost. So it's not showing up here, not showing up there. Oh, I thought I was letting you all out early. Four minutes early. That's something, right, Gianna? She's not talking to me. Okay, I'll see you later. Have a great wellness day.